I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My life will be changed forever. After today, it will not remain the same again. In the name of Jesus, amen. I say, amen. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I am who God says I am. Nothing can change that fact. I am a victor. An overcomer. I am a success. I walk in divine health. I walk in prosperity. In the name of Jesus. 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 I walk in prosperity. I walk in victory. Holy Ghost is in me. In the name of Jesus. The very breath I breathe is the breath of God coming from my spirit. In the name of Jesus. If you believe, put your Bible down, clap those hands and shout a good hallelujah. And you may be seated. Last Sunday we talked about guaranteed conquest through faith. Guaranteed conquest through faith. Today we want to deal with the secret of faith. Faith is important in the life of every Christian. How does this faith work? How come some Christians don't even experience the benefit of faith but they're Christians? What is faith? Some things they know all about faith. But when you come to watch their life very carefully, or you watch what they say, you come to realize they really have not come to have a grasp of what faith is. We're we'll talking about the secret of faith. Going from faith to manifestation. What is the secret? What is the mystery? I'm going to go right straight to the point today because of our time. But I would like to start by saying this morning, or today rather, that faith, in the Greek terms, Greek word is pistis. Pistis. And you have to watch the, the tenses of faith. Tenses of faith. You must understand what faith is, where faith is, and the secret of faith and how to make it work in your life. Faith is always business. And it always refers to past tense. The verb pisto in Greek means believe. That means to trust and to rely on. To believe is something that we do. But pistis. Thought he said pistis. Pistis. So pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. So pistis or faith is not the act of believing, but the things that are believed. So faith is not the act of believing, but the things that are believed. Somebody say believed. believed. Now I'm going to do, I like doing this. Put your thumb like this. Say believed. believed. No, you have to bend your head backward. <laughs> do like this. Say believed. believed. Some are not doing it. Some are still doing it. Put your thumb like this. Say, believe. believe. Good. <laughs> so faith is past tense. It's believed. It's not believing. Believing is in the arena of hope. And hope is a good waitress. Faith is a good receiver. Believing means you've not yet gotten it. You are believing. 
Believing is in the future. You will never get it. I don't know if you ever got to tomorrow yet. Where is tomorrow? Where is tomorrow? When you get to tomorrow, tomorrow becomes what? When you get to tomorrow, tomorrow becomes what? Yeah. Tomorrow. Not tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow never becomes today. Tomorrow always is tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. <laughs> tomorrow I will do this. When tomorrow comes, tomorrow I will do that. And tomorrow comes, tomorrow. Say tomorrow. tomorrow. But today is the day of salvation. Yeah. Today is the appointed time. Today is the appointed day. And you believe today what he has done in the past. Yeah. So faith is in the past. Many of you have to change your tense because you are so used to saying, I am believing God for a new job. I'm believing God for this. I'm believing God for a car. I'm believing. I'm believing. I am believing. I am believing. And every time you are believing, you never get it. Because believing is not faith. The Bible faith is believed. Bible faith is what? Believe. Come on, do it right. Bible faith is what? Believe. Ah. When you bend that neck, man, something is happening. When you look at the way God talks, because God is a faith God. God is a faith God. So how does he talk? How does God talk when he talks about faith? Let me show you some scriptures here today that before we deal with the nitty-gritty part of the secret. Look at how God spoke to Joshua. Joshua 6 verse 1 and 2. This is going to blow your mind. When you get this into your spirit, man, goodness, you will be living a life of faith, walking in continuous victory and success because you know. Because when you know, you grow. And when you grow, you glow. Until you know, you never shine in life. And those that think they know already, they should be shining. Say, I am shining. I am shining. Look at what he said, Jericho. Now, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and none came in. Look at verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Are you there? See, I will give you. I will give you. I will give you. I have what? That is faith language. Remember, Jericho, the world was still standing. The city gate, the Bible tells us in verse 1, is still shut up. Everything is shut up. You can't get in, you can't get out. In verse 2, God said, I have given you already. See, I have given Jericho to your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Given. God sp spoke to them in the past tense about Jericho. Of course, the walls were still up. But God already promised them that the city is already theirs. So I have it. Let me say it at this point. You have, you got to have it so you can have it. If you don't have it, you will not have it. Or I put it this way. You got to get it so you can get it. If you want to get it, you have to have gotten it. If you have not gotten it, you cannot get it. So that is my English. If you have not gotten it, you cannot get it. So you have to have gotten it so you can get it. Say, so I got it. Say, so I got it. If you don't get it, you cannot get it. Until you got it, you will never get it. You have to believe you've got it so you can get it. It is in the getting it that the get it manifests. It is in the getting it that the getting takes place. Until you got it, you cannot get it. Say, I got it. 
now you really got it. So with Jericho, God said to Joshua, I've given you already. How about to Abraham? Genesis 17 verse 5. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made, not I will make you, for I have is that what it says? Yeah. I can't see. Okay, for okay, that's King James. All right, I'm reading you King James. For, for I, father of many nations, have I made thee made, and made his past tense. It is not tell Abraham, I am going to bless you with children. So I have already given you those children. So I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. Do you believe it? Yes. So I have my new car already. Yes. I have my new job already. I have my new house already. I have everything that I need already. Do you really believe it? Do you believe it? Until you have gotten it, you cannot get it. And your actions and your attitude and your words changes because you believe you got it. Say, I got it. He tells us John Romans 4 verse 17. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made, I love this, man. that's how God talks. I mean, all of you are God's children. You got to talk like your daddy. You talk like your father. You don't talk like the child of the word of the devil. You talk like your father. He said, God said, as it is, I have made a father of many nations before whom he believed even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Let men laugh at you. Let them think you're crazy. Let them think you're talking nonsense. Let them think you have lost your mind. Just keep on speaking what God has said. You got it. Say, so I got it. I got it. I got it. In the name of Jesus. Now, let's go to some more examples here. Look at what happened when Jesus was referring to Lazarus. John eleven forty one. Then he took away the stone, and from the place where he had dead man was lying, Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you, because you're going to hear my prayer. What, what, what did Jesus say? Is that past tense? Even before Jesus prayed, he said, God, I thank you, Father, because you have already won. Said, Father, I thank thee, for thou hast heard me. See, that's how Jesus talks. Notice what Jesus said about praying in faith. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Faith is pistis. I want you to get this into your spirit. And please, don't miss out on any of this. Everyone should pay attention. Every child, every teenager, every adult. Make sure nobody is talking to you. Those of you who are chatting in the back there, it's Usher Watch is distracting me when they are talking to each other. Stop those children. Glory be to God. Separate them. Put them in different places. Amen? Amen. Mark 11. Mark. Mark 11. 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things ever ye desire? How many of you desire something? Do you want something in your life? Do you desire something? When you pray, believe you have received them. And that you shall have them. You got to believe you got it so you can get it. Let's look at it in the amplified rendering. Amplified. For this reason... I'm telling you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted, granted, granted. Somebody say granted. granted. Somebody say granted. granted. And then you will get it. You have to have gotten it for you to get it. If you don't get it, you cannot get it. Do, do you get this? Do you get it? 
It's very clear. If they believe it has been granted, then you will get it. So you are not saying he's going to give me. You are saying, I got it. Say, I got it. And that's what that happened. You know, I, I think of, let me just demonstrate to you, show you something that happened with faith. It happened to me without knowing I was doing it. So there was one, one time, maybe two months, three months ago, the son of Sister Genzel had not walked. He had some situation going on with him. And if you watch that video, I completely, honestly, this is true. I completely forgot about what I was praying for him. So I didn't think in my head that the mother told me that the child is not working. So I had a child. I said, okay, in the name of Jesus, strength, come to his leg. I just dropped that child on the floor. I just dropped him, walk. In my, somehow it appears, I just believe. So I, I wasn't doing it gently. Let's go gently. Maybe it might collapse if I drop. No, just drop him. I mean, if you saw that video, you got to watch it. Faith can be seen. I didn't say, come, let's do it gently. Okay, slowly, just in case his leg collapse. No, just drop him. Walk. And the boy like, I'm not sure that. He was trying to walk and he was, then suddenly he began to run. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. That is faith at work without thinking that he couldn't walk. And a good example that will help you. There's a woman that came here, she lives all the way in Elizabethville. Who have not eaten for how long? How many years? For a long time. I want to make sure I, how many years? Five years? Whatever it is. I want to make sure I say it correctly because they're watching. Amen? We have to have integrity. So I'm not sure how long, he, but for a while, definitely for years, she has not eaten. For years, she has not eaten. Not eating solid food. All she eats is drunk liquids. I put her up on the altar. Remember, we are always live. Amen? I wasn't thinking, how about if she chokes and die? That is the end of all this miracle talk. But I never thought of that. I said, bring food. You know what the husband brought? Dry hamburger. <laughs> Should I have brought banana? At least, it will slide down. He brought a hamburger with meat in it. I said, Lord, have mercy. I did what I've never done. I hope I don't do it again. I said, open your mouth. I, said, <laughs> I almost, I don't know what happened to her, but opened her mouth, and I think I must have, I don't know what I did, but Please don't try that, amen? amen. Don't no spit on nobody's mouth. They should open her mouth. I said, I'll do what I, whatever it was as I was led. I said, eat that food. Watch, was Sunday, right? I'm not sure we hear that Sunday. Yeah. On a Sunday morning, as she was eating that food, and she ate the first bite, it went down. She chewed again, it went down. And she kept on chewing, and it kept on going down. And she never choked. How did it happen? It's believed that it's already happened. So you are not looking for it to happen. So your eye is not looking for it to happen. Your eyes, your mind already believes it is already done. Somebody shout hallelujah. Faith says it is done. Faith says coronavirus is dead. As far as I'm concerned, no corona, crow, crow, crow can come close to my family, Amen. come close to my body. Amen. It is dead in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if you're having a symptom of, of cold, or a symptom of your coffee, oh, 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 
and your, your body is feeling warm. You don't be saying, maybe I got it. No. You just said you believe it is dead. So you tell that condition. You tell that you tell that, that, that fever. You tell the fever and you tell whatever we are feeling. You tell the cough. You cough. Mind your business. If you don't stop right now, I'm going to drink so much water and I will mess you up. Amen? Amen. You got to know how this is work. You, can, you have to believe it has happened Let it to manifest in your life. You don't be saying, God is going to do it. It is done. Amen. Say, I am, I am blessed. So Jesus said, you have to believe it has been granted, then you will get it. That's how faith works. How about the, how about the, the complete, uh, let me give you the different translation. The new century version. He said, so I tell you to believe that you have received the thing you ask for in prayer and then God will give them to you. You believe you've received them already. How about the good God's word? God's word version. That's why I tell you to have faith that you have already received whatever you pray for. It will be yours. How about English standard version? I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe you have received it, it will be yours. How about the complete Jewish Bible? Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, trust you are receiving it. That's a little different. And it will be yours. How about the Bible basic English? For this reason I said to you, what whatever you ask, make requests in prayer, ask faith that it has been given to you and that you will what? Have. Do you see that? So faith is in the past. You have to believe you've gotten it to get it. The Bible tells us in the New Century Version, Hebrews 11 verse 1, faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it yet. So it is real. Faith comprehends as, as fact what has not yet manifested in the natural realm. Somebody say faith. But you have to understand how faith works. You have to believe you have already received it. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, NIV. Second Peter 1 verse 3. If divine power will give us, let's see what it says. Second Peter 1 3. If divine power will give us, is that what it says? As what? How many things? How many things? I can't hear you. How many things? How many things? Everything you need has been given to you when already. So I have it. I have it. I have it. So now, the secret of faith is one, you believe you got it. You believe you have received it. And because faith is so important, if you don't believe you've gotten it, you keep on going through life, always waiting to get something. If you can just switch, what is a switch? I don't know if you know how to switch. You just, just change your thinking. Change the way you think. Just believe you got it. When you believe you're blessed, you talk different. Is that right? How many of you are blessed here? Yes. And you walk different, is that right? Yes. How many of you are blessed? Yes. And you live different because you believe you are blessed. So I'm not broke. I'm not broke. I am rich. I'm rich. But I got no money. That is not your business. Amen? Amen. I am blessed. I am blessed. 
I am rich. I, am rich. <laughs> I know he practiced that sometime, some time ago, and somebody sent him $10,000. How much? $14,000. These things work, amen? amen? You just have to believe you've gotten it. Then you just keep on, keep on speaking it. Because faith is, there is a secret to faith. But once you know the secret, it is no more a secret. It's a secret to those who don't know how these things work. When they are saying, I hope I don't catch this virus. No. You say, no. No, not me. But you are coughing. And so what? I was coughing three years ago. I had fever 20 years ago. Eh, forget it. Give me some, give me some Tylenol. I don't know if you take Tylenol. Just one or two. That's okay. You can tell Tali no, it's not a sin, amen? amen. But this thing, but you don't start diagnosing. You, who was, she was saying last Friday, she had some symptoms. She began to Google. <laughs> Stop all those Googling business. Don't be Googling. It's running those compatible with coronavirus. <laughs> Say, I am healed. I, I walk in divine health. In the name of Jesus. So number one key to the secret of faith is your right confession. Right confession. Right confession. You know, Abraham, his name used to be called Abraham. Abraham means the exalted prince. Or exalted prince is not the same as father of many nations. We call it Abraham, that's how we call it now. But, it, but saying, I'm exalted priest is not the same as saying, I'm the father of nations. Is it the same thing? No. So Abraham, Abraham, at this time his name, God told him already, Abraham begins to tell people from now on, you better stop calling me Abraham. From now on, you should be calling me Big Daddy. Father of multitude. This man got no child. Do you know how ridiculous it is? Not even one baby. And yet he's telling everybody, call me. <laughs> Big what? You? You are over 90 years old. If not even have a child, when will the Big Daddy manifest? I don't care what you see, just call me Big Daddy. Amen. So I am, I am blessed. But you can't pay your rent, but what? I am blessed. Yes. But you can't even pay your car note, but what? Uh, but you are facing eviction notice, but I am what? Uh, but your bank account is really negative, but I am what? I'm but uh, listen, you just have a note on your door, your water is about to be shut off, but I am what? But there is a repossession notice pasted in your but I'm what? That is the language of faith. And when you talk like that, something happens in the realm of the spirit. So right confession is important. Abraham told his friend, don't you ever call Abraham. So when they call him Abraham, say, that's not me. Abraham. 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 Who are you? Who are you calling? Didn't I tell you I'm not Abraham? I'm Abraham. I'm big dad. So when people call you what you are not, don't take it. When they call you who you are not, don't receive it. When they tell you who you are becoming that is not in, in God's word, don't take it. You are who God says you are. I say you are blessed. I said you are famous. I say your influence is increasing. You are going places. You are financing God's kingdom. 
I know some of you don't think you can do that. So I am a kingdom financier. In the name of Jesus. And I believe a time is coming and it is now. When the church would mention we are building a new building, it's costing $10 million. And somebody would say, you know what, apostle, listen, is it $10 million? I'm giving you 11 I'm adding an extra one million just in case you exceed your budget. Say, I'm the one. I'm the one. It may look not to be real, but do you know there's nothing, in, there's nothing too hard for God to do? Not too hard for God to do? Nothing. My own life, I know that. that you can come from a place of non-entity and God can lift you up if you just believe him. You, you, you don't have to be born with silver spoon in your mouth. You don't have to be born by wealthy parents. You just have to be a child of God and believe God. It doesn't matter if you are born in the project. It doesn't matter if you have no job right now. It doesn't matter if you are on food stamp right now. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you believe God that you are a kingdom financier. If you are, say, I am. I am. If you believe, say, I believe. I believe. So Philemon, verse 6, Philemon, or Philemon, B-H-R-L-E, Philemon, verse 6, that the, that the communication of your faith become, may become effectual, effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. The communication of your faith, King James, be made effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. You got to speak good. Say with me, it's only good news. Say it's only good news. Only good news. Always good news. So you are not a propaganda of bad news. When bad news shows up, you don't keep telling, you don't call, put on, on CNN or put on Facebook. Those of you that like Facebook, you should be posting every video of STBC. Don't be posting your status as feeling sad or depressed. Oh, I'm going through it now. Going through what now? Don't you know who you are? And even though you go through the fire, you come out smelling like heaven. Yeah. You should tell them when you come out, not tell them where you're going. It is to everybody who is your friend on Facebook that is your friend for real. So you can't be pronouncing death over yourself on Facebook and you are broadcasting and talking about bad news. Say, I am a good news barrier. So your confession is important. The right confession. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. I say unto you, the word is in nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. The word will preach even the word of faith. The word of faith. You have to speak God's word. You have to declare and make your right confession. Don't say anything that is not good. Some of you have to really discipline yourself very much. When you are tempted to curse that child, zip up your mouth. If you are tempted to curse your husband or your wife or your whatever it is, just close your mouth. Amen? Because you are only allowed to be a blessing. That say, neighbor, neighbor, I'm only allowed, only allowed to be a blessing to you. Right now, I bless you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Give them a big high five. Bless you. Your confession comes about with what you allow in, you have three gates into your spirit. 
three gates. There are two entrances, three entrances into this room, the torium. You have one here, you have one there, one there. Three. So, you are the spirit man. There are three gates into your spirit. Number one, the eye gate. You cannot see everything. Some of you are watching some wrong movies. Stop watching it. Every time you watch it, you're always depressed and sad. And your faith is depleted. Why are you watching the thing that is not helping your spirit? Why? Why are you constantly putting on something that is making you sad? Making you depressed? The eye gets. Because whatever you see leaves an impression in your spirit. So you must discipline yourself. No matter how the public, the, no matter how much the public talks about that movie, doesn't mean that you have to watch it. Amen? Amen. The next gate is the ear gates. You don't have to hear everything. Man or woman who is always cursing you out on the phone, learn to drop that phone. No, don't hang up. The my, my feet, you are, you are, uh, you are what? Disrespectful. But you can tell them, listen, if you keep on talking like this, I'm going to hang up the phone. And they keep on talking and talking and cussing you out and cussing everybody out. Just click. I don't know if you know the, stop, the end button. I don't know if you know the end button. You can hear everything. It will affect your confession. Because you're going to tell somebody what you just heard. Then it's number three. Your mouth gate. Your tongue. What you say gets into your spirit. What you pronounce gets into your spirit. So he said, faith comes by hearing. You're hearing it. And when you confess that Jesus is Lord, faith comes are life in your heart. So the eye gate, the ear gate, and the mouth gate. Of course, in the mouth gate, we know the Bible tells us that death and life is in the power of the tongue. You have to watch what you say. Your right confession makes a big difference to see manifestation of God's purpose in your life. Because your confession brings the blessing. You can no more say, nobody likes me here. Now say with me, I am lovable. I am likable. Everywhere I go, I am loved. I am liked by everybody. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know if you really believe that. So when you believe that, anywhere you go, you just believe they're going to like you. Why are you walking like this? Are you walking like this? Are you walking like this? It doesn't matter. What you believe in in your heart is releasing energy. Some of you call it vibes. You call it vibes? I mean, if you get a vibe if somebody is angry at you. How about if they love you? I mean, if you can feel the love vibe. Hey! You can feel the vibe. And the more and the vibe is from their spirit. And they begin to believe. And you are speaking the word. You begin to experience. Work of faith. So faith begins to speak that I, I already got it. You are telling your friends, I got it already. I got it already. Oh my, 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 my. Jesus. God is good. Can I share something with you? This is an interesting one. God. So many years ago, over 20 something years ago, wow, over 28 years ago, maybe 1992, I had been to Saudi Arabia to work in a city called Jeddah. Jeddah. And I went back to Nigeria because I had a later to resume work in the United States of America. So I went back to Nigeria to get my visa. 
And I was denied the visa. Somebody said denied the visa. So I went home. My friends asked me, how, how, how is everything? Everything is wonderful. Did you get your visa? Yes, I got my visa. Come on, some of you don't get in this. Because when the devil know where you are stressing out, you add much fire to the stress. I said, God, you got it? Yes. I, when are you traveling? Very soon. I went back to the embassy. They said, come pick up your visa on Wednesday. I went on Wednesday. They told me, we changed our minds. No visa. I said, this is coming serious. Then, knowing, knowing, I mean, most of you already know me, I went back again. Tell your neighbor, never give up. Tell the next one, never give up. It's never over. Until you win. So if you don't win, you don't quit. You have, they have to drag your body. It happened to me when, when, when I went one of those times, the U.S. married after Hancock. They said, we told you, don't come here again. I said, okay. Thank you. The next time, I prepared even bigger. I carried a briefcase. That briefcase, it was not leather, it was a cloth briefcase. Remember, it was a colored briefcase, but it was cloth. And I wore an outfit I brought from Saudi Arabia. Looking like, it, but it was not a suit, looking like a Saudi. Like a long gown. And I walked like the owner of the embassy. There are two gates. One gate for the regular people. The other gate for the Americans and the workers. So I'm going to go to that workers gate. I carry my briefcase and I'm focusing on God. I kept on walking. Nobody asked me any question. I walked through. I got there. I said, I want to talk to the ambassador. They said to me, Amb do you have a meeting? I said, not really. I said, what's the matter? I said, I have a message for him from the highest authority. Everybody just backed up. This must be an important personality. And I was putting a straight face. I was 24 years old. So think about it. But I was, I was a little big. Maybe not as big as maybe, maybe big as this. I don't know what I was a little big as this. And they said, all right, let's call the ambassador. Ambassador came out. And ambassador said, what can I do for you, sir? I said, can I come into the office? He said, no. Talk. I said, I want to go inside. Because I didn't want any interruption from all those staff members. Sometimes, you know, some staff members can mess up your purpose. <laughs> I didn't want it to be part of the discussion. I said, let's go inside the office. He said, no, let's go to the door. He took me out to a corner. I said, to one ask. I said, listen, I have come to the embassy more than three, four times. They told me visa approved. They told me again they are sorry. I said, I can't take this anymore. I got to be in America by May. He looked at me. I said, what? I, said, I, said I have to. I said, how can they tell me no? When did the pastor say they should tell me yes? Listen, tell anybody you got nothing to lose. But victory. He said to me, young man, sorry, but uh, the consular officer is in charge. I'm just the ambassador. I didn't know there are two different offices. I wish I knew. I was told to the consular general. I didn't know they were different. He said, sorry, he'll be out of here in, in a couple of months. He'll be transferred to somewhere else. You can come back in three months, and in three months, you know, things will be different. I said, my goodness. The paper I received from my employer in Michigan was about to expire in May. And this was getting close to February or April, and I cannot afford. And the employer has called me. If you don't get your visa, we are, we are taking back your H-1B. I told them, give me one more chance. Tell your neighbor, give me one more chance. They did. I went home. The Lord told me from now on, stop, stop praying in English. I want you to pray in tongues. I'm not feeling how to pray in tongues. I'll begin to blow tongues. I'm not you can blow tongues. Now blow it. Let me hear you. Is that how you blow it? 
How many of you can pray in tongues? Now pray, let me hear you. Pray like you are STBC. Amen. And the Lord told me, don't tell anybody anymore. Go to the embassy. So I told my sister, the devil cannot read. <laughs> Your faith is limited to knowledge. The devil cannot read. I'm going to write down for you. Please, pray in tongues. Don't pray this in English now. Say, but I'm going to a place, another place. It's called Kaduna. I'm going to Kaduna to get my visa. But oh, please, I'm writing it. Don't even say it out. I don't want the devil to hear what I'm, what's going on right now. And I went over to that other place. When I went there, he said, what happened? Suppose I've got your visa all along. Come on, give us your passport. Give it to them. He said, come back at 2 p.m. to pick, 1 p.m. to pick it up. I said, oh, this is what happened, 1 p.m.? I couldn't believe it. No question asked. Went back at 1 p.m. on the dot. We are so sorry. We made a mistake. We gave you five years instead of two years. And if you go in with the five years, they might send you back from the U.S. You have to come back tomorrow with a new passport photograph so we can change it. I said, excuse me, man. I have a passport photograph in my pocket. <laughs> Take it. Change it. I'm waiting. So they change it and stamp it, stamp the old one, cancel with no prejudice, and send, it, send a new one, two years visa. And that was how the Lord supernaturally turned my captivity around because you are walking by faith. And you are declaring God's word and not taking a no for an answer. It doesn't matter what the devil thinks, you refuse to accept a no. The Bible says God promises there are yes and amen. You must keep on speaking God's word and make it the right confession. You don't tell people how you feel. If you don't feel good, I'll be telling everybody on Facebook, I don't feel good. Say, I feel good. In the name of Jesus. I think of that woman that lost her baby and the prophet, people asking him, how, how are you? She said, it is well. How is the baby? It is what? Her baby is dead. Then she, until she met with the prophet, with the man of God. Man of God, listen. That baby you prayed for is dead. That means you don't tell everybody how you feel. So, so say neighbor, Amen. if I don't tell you, don't tell you. Exactly, exactly how I feel, no offense. I am blessed. I am prospered. I'm happy. I'm joyful. I am healed. I'm going higher. Now shout hallelujah. I'm getting something. The other thing you must do, there are two things left. In the next one, inside your right confession, your patience. You have to patiently wait. And patience means and constantly remaining the same. Not going to the left or going to the right. But when they say every church is not me. If they say you can open it, what do you say? Not me. If they say you cannot come to camp at the church because of the virus, what do you say? say? But can't you get it? People are getting sick and dying. What do you say? Can't you see that no church is open? What do you say? You have the confession and you are consistently remaining the same. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, it said, not being slothful, but followers of them who have faith and patience inherit the promise. For God, for when, when God had made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater one, he swear by himself. 
saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee. I'm multiplying, I will multiply thee. And after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. If you can patiently wait on God, you will see the manifestation of your belief in reality. Amen? Amen. Number three. You, you, you make the right confession. You are confident and you, are, you have patience. You're not complaining like Egyptian, like Israelites were doing. Last but not the least, you have to act. You have to do something. Tell your neighbor, do something. If you believe you got the job, they apply for the job. If you believe you are healed, then get up and walk. If you believe you are no more sick, then do what unsick people do. Amen? If you believe that your knee has been healed, then use it. But it's diverting. Use it. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. You got to act. Not based on how you feel, but based on what God says. If God says you, are, you have the mind of God, you never tell anybody, I'm confused. So I'm not confused. I have a sound mind. Next time you are tempted to say you are confused, zip up that mouth and say, I got a sound mind. So you have to do what you believe. In, in, in the Greek, it's called erogon, which is corresponding action. If without action, it's useless. James 2.20 tells us that. That faith without work is dead. If you believe that God has done it, then do what you need to do that proves that God has done it. Amen. Because faith is your proof. Faith is the evidence that you got it. If you don't do it, it means you have no faith. He tells us Hebrews 11, verse 1. Let's quickly go there. We'll go back to James in a moment. 11, 1 in King James. Is that now faith is, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance. Of the hope for the evidence of this not yet seen. So the evidence that you have, that you have not yet received that thing, is your faith. Faith is the evidence. What is the evidence you got a new car? Your faith. What is the evidence you're moving to your new house soon? What is the evidence you are healed? What is the evidence you are going higher? What is the evidence you are a millionaire? What is the evidence you are getting a brand new car? What is the evidence you are blessed? The evidence is not in the thing. The evidence is in your faith. So I want to show me the evidence. This is it right here. This is the evidence. So James tells us in verse 20, James said, Oh foolish man, don't you know that faith without work is dead? James 2.20. Was not Abraham our father justified by works, by what he did, his action? He offered Isaac, his son, on the altar. Can you believe that? God gave him a son, and God told him, give it back to me. And that is a good place to have it, to interject here. When God wants something from you, it's because he wants to get something to you. When God asks you to give of a type of seed, it's because He has something bigger to give to you. God really don't need your money. He wants to get something into your hand. When God asked Abraham to give his son, God already said, I have prepared a ram for me already. But Abraham asked by doing what God has already asked him to do. It is an act of faith and an evidence that you really have faith. So with faith, you have to act. Look at what it tells us here. 22. Do you see that faith was working together with his works and 
by work, faith was made complete or faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. That he was a friend of God. 25. How about Rahab? Rahab the harlot justified because she acted. She did something. She had faith in the God of the Israelites. She believed in that God and she was willing to act and to hide the spies so they don't get killed. She acted. So to see manifestation and the secret of faith, believe that it has already happened, you have to confess, make the right confession. You have to believe by being patient and thirdly, you have to act. You have to act. Not only do you confess right, believe right, you have patience and you act in the direction of your belief. Amen? Are you blessed this morning? If you are, put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus and shall glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, if you're here today, everyone rise up, please. If you're here tonight, this morning, or this afternoon, you know, if Jesus were to come now, you would not make it to heaven because you have not yet made Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe you are watching us online. Wherever you are watching this from, all over the world, a lot of you in the audience, you know if Jesus is to come now, you will not go to heaven because you're not born again. Mr. Apostle, I said, look, I would love to accept Jesus into my heart. I want to put my faith in him so I can be born again. If that's you, wave at me so I can pray for you. Anyone in the audience, I would like to accept Jesus as the Lord of your life. Amen. Anyone, glory be to God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Our God is good. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. For, for the salvation of our souls. If you are watching us online and you know you are not born again, you can accept Jesus right now. You can accept him into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior. Just repeat this prayer after me. And please let us help as they pray this prayer. Our audience online. Is there Jesus? I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. You died for my sins. You died for my transgressions. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe you are alive. You rose up from the dead on the third day. I accept your forgiveness. I accept your righteousness. I accept your love. I accept the eternal life which you offer right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. If you have made this prayer today, you can send us a message online. We'll be glad to lead you in this new path of the things of God. God really loves you and he wants you not only to be saved but to live a victorious Christian life. Amen? Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Now put your hands again together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now if you are watching with us for the very first time, we are so glad you came. If this is your very first time on a Sunday morning, on a Sunday morning, this is your very first time on a Sunday morning, I have a special gift for you. Can you wave at me? Anyone in the house? God bless you. God bless you. Keep your hand up. We have a special gift for you. I want to thank so much for you being here today. God bless you. And uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. 
Thank you. There's somebody up in the front here. God bless you. We are glad. We are grateful to God that you've come to be a part of our service today. And I know you have been blessed. I know you have been blessed. And your life will never remain the same again. Amen? How many of you are truly blessed? If you are blessed, say, I am blessed. Now the ushers are going to get ready some flyers to pass out to invite your friends. You say, but there's a lockdown. I know. How many of you know I know? <laughs> invite them anyway. Amen? Amen? If they tell you, I can't come when there's a lockdown, don't force them. Tell them you can come when lockdown is over or you can come right now. But just to let you know, we are open. That's it. Amen? Amen. Now the ushers will give three flyers to you in a moment. Just after the offering, you will get a copy, three copies for yourself to invite people. Just invite them. Be a part of increase, a part of the kingdom of God, or promoting God's kingdom. Amen. Are you blessed? I don't know if you believe they are planning to be there. I don't know if you want to be a blessing. I lift up your offering so you can be a blessing to the house of the Lord. Give off your offering, your tithe, your seed unto God today. And you will see God multiplying it in such a way that transcends of human reasoning. God is in the business of multiplication. Glory be to God. Lord, we give you praise. Lift up your offering. Lift up your tithe. I'm going to pray a special prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this offering. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the offering people are about to give their tithe, their seed. But according to your word, and I stand on this altar, I decree that their hands are blessed. That their giving is blessed. I decree a thousand fold in return for everyone giving right now by faith. I decree that in the name of Jesus, they will never have to beg for bread. They will never lack anything good whatsoever. All their needs are met in the name of Jesus. All their needs are met in the name of Jesus. The devourer is rebuked for their sake in the name of Jesus. All those who are looking for jobs, looking to receive their promotion, I decree the job is theirs right now. The promotion is theirs right now. When others are crying for joblessness, I decree there are plenty of jobs to choose from. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your blessing. We give you the praise and we honor your holy name. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, and everyone I believe says amen. amen. As the song is played, just make your way towards the, uh, the wall, the offering, and then we'll be closing the moment.